Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Happy New Year. This is the Reach Podcast 2020. And, uh, you know, we appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, Today we have a special treat. We have a young lady here who y'all seen before. Um, We'll let her introduce herself with her new title, and it's official now. Um, So, you know, it's a new year, new blessings, new goals. You know, in 2020, I hope everybody is able to accomplish everything that they've set out to do. Um, We appreciate the support that y'all have shown to the Reach Podcast and all my guests. Um, Shout out to everybody who's helped me uh, create and uh, uh, push forward this platform. Um, My GMT family, all the friends and family who's been tuning in. And uh, I hated to keep y'all waiting, but I had to bring in the new year the right way. Um, And this young lady here in in the studio with me, um, I'll allow her to introduce herself again. Who are you, ma'am? Alicia Evans and I am a new author. Absolutely. Absolutely. Y'all have to go and get the book. The book is out um, and it just simply says we all have a story to tell. Lost in a saved world. Um, and We're going to talk about this book today. You gave it to me two days ago at about what? I don't know. I came by about 11 o'clock during the day and before 8 p.m. I was done with the book. You know, So I know everything that's in there. We're going to talk about that. Have a few questions for you and um, just help everybody understand your journey, which is a very interesting read. Uh, very simple, um, you know, well put together. So I applaud you for that. You know, I, I really, really, really do. So, um, you know, and I'm sure you're going to have some book signings going on and some different things here in the in the very near future. I have uh, someone that I talked to today already about something like that. We can talk about that later. And, uh, you know, so it's a new year, you know. Um, I guess talk about what, what what you got going on. What's your next goals, and what are you looking to accomplish here in 2020? Well, I will be starting on my second book shortly. Um, I am trying to put together some some things like a book signing mm-hmm. and possibly doing a book signing at a, at a bookstore. So um, this is all new to me. Right. So you know there are growing pains, and I'm open to listening and learning. Absolutely. And, and taking it any advice that I can get absolutely absolutely so um as she said it we have a new author here you know um the book is amazing I can't say that enough um and I have a little background information on talking to you during your process of finishing up the book so to actually see it and to be able to touch it and um you know hold it and actually complete the reading of it man it, it was really 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 amazing like I said before um and so I'd like to just start off before we get into the book and dive into all the different things, um, just acknowledge a few people, um, you know, shout out to my man, Roy Dillard, uh, who's been a catalyst in my chess club, which uh, the chess club is going to start back up on February 9th, which will be the Sunday after Super Bowl. So I can't wait to get back involved with all my kids, which I'm actually still involved with most of them, but um, just having everybody back in the same building and the new things that we have going on for the chess club will be in the same place, same time, uh, two to four every Sunday, um, starting back up on February 9th. Um, shout out to Miss Karen and the World Youth Foundation. Um, we have not stopped. Uh, you know, I'm basically the head of uh, our program, the, feed, the food ministry, which is called the Jog Program, um, where now seven days a week we're picking up from five different locations, um, Whole Foods, El Pollo, Chipotle, um, uh, Uh, Auntie Annie's and then uh, Chick-fil-A. We're picking up at each one of these locations every single day of the week. Um, We are definitely looking for people who want to um, step up and step in and and, and, uh, get lend support and lend a hand. If you have time, it's mainly in the morning times, um, anytime from about 8 to as late as 2 p.m. I have the schedule. You can get on the World Youth Foundation volunteer volunteer page and you can go and look at all the details there we can send out an email you can check my page i'm gonna put up another flyer today but we are definitely looking for help we're trying to expand this as far as we can um if you know of any families in need if you're in need um you know it's just a great 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 thing that's going on and i've had the privilege of actually implementing a lot of things in this program and that's what i've been doing pretty much every day you know and uh in addition to the other things that i do so we're definitely looking for help and support on that so if you're able and you're willing and you're in need or you know some people organizations jobs i mean we put together little luncheons off all the food that we get um so it's a great opportunity to be a blessing and bless somebody 
Um, also, my sister, Mika Diamond, shout out to her and all the little different things she has going on. She had a great show this morning, so I want to shout out to her and uh, Mr. Anthony Hall and Tasha Dickerson for the things that y'all are doing this morning. So, um, the entire GMT family, Chris Bryant, my man Nice, um, I just appreciate y'all. You know, definitely uh, from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate everybody, you know, lending support, giving support, and doing what we do here and, and making a difference here in the community. And last but not least, my mother, who has only missed one show, and that was because she had something to do for my grandmother. I appreciate her being in the studio every single week, you know, before she goes to work and spending a little time, you know, getting the first up-close look uh, on the show. So, is there anybody you want to shout out to besides your sister? I know for sure, Miss Stephanie Evans. I'm, I'm going to steal the thunder right quick <laughs> and say what's up to her. Um, and she says she'll check this out later. But is there any other things that you want to shout out? I know your sons or whoever you may want to shout out to. My sons, Isaiah and Austin. Uh, my best friend, Trina, Martisa, and Tamara. Okay. I wouldn't be here without you guys and of course God. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And God comes first on everything, man. You put him first and you just, you know, you just never know the things that are gonna come. And then, you know, when it goes to lending a helping hand and when you're helping people, just do it without expecting anything back because that's the point of helping someone is that you're gonna get something back for sure. You know, and you're gonna you're gonna put yourself in position to open up doors that you never dreamed of, um, opportunities that you never dreamed of. Um, and just, it, it's, it's just going to be a great year. I can feel it in my bones, as they say, you know, so I'm looking forward to all the blessings and things that are going on and, um, shout out to my crew, uh, you know, Steve, Joe, all you guys, uh, we need to put a name on our crew so I can just say the name of the crew. So it'll cover everybody. I don't have time to, to list all those 30 plus guys, but, um, shout out to you guys, man, and my kids and, you know, my family, happy new year to everybody again. And, uh, appreciate y'all tuning in. So, I want to dive into this book, you know, Lost in the Saved World. Um, so tell us, I guess, what the book means to you. We'll start there. It it means, a, a, in a sense of a word, a weight, a big weight has been lifted off of my shoulders. Um, yeah. To me, it has been kind of like a shadow mm. um, that has followed me. I've always been that type of person that was concerned about how people viewed me and, right. and you know, what, what would they think about me if they knew this and that I didn't realize that held me back and I don't have that shadow. I don't have that, that weight, that rock. It's, this is it. I, 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 it's laid right here. Right, right. So, um, and I think I kind of worded it perfectly when I went back and read it. I'm like, you laid yourself on the line with this. You know, you just put it all out there, man. And I keep saying it. I can't say it enough. When I read the book and then at the end, I was like, what? <laughs> and so it, 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 it just leads for the next thing that you have coming, man. So, you know, I, I think you did a great job with the book. Um, and like I said, I've read everything. So I have a few questions. But in light of those who are anticipating reading it, who are already reading it, and shout out to everybody who supported her by buying the books, um, you know, I know she really appreciates that. What should they expect now that I know what, what do you want people to expect to get from this book regarding yourself? To know that, um, well, for starters, if there is anything that I have ever done said, whether it was intentional or unintentional that may have hurt someone, um, this will kind of explain why. And though this is not an excuse, right by at, at all um i wanted to say that first i apologize <laughs> for it because I, I i i'm not the person that i used to be right but i also want you guys to know and understand where my roots came from why things were the way that they were why i didn't get it for so many years mm -hmm. and and it sets the foundation of what's to come next and so you would be able to understand all of the ignorant, not so smart things that I did. And you would look at me and say, well, why would you do that? Right. Well, now you know. Yeah, yeah. And I can I can attest to that again. Like I said, I've read it. So um, one, yeah, you had a little smart mouth, didn't you? <laughs> you had a very, very, very smart mouth. And, you know, um, um, like I'm trying not to give too much, but, you know, in reading the book and, and, and following your journey, 
you started off having a smart mouth, then you went to purposely doing the things that you were doing and saying what you were saying. Um, but it came from a place of hurt, you know, and and the old saying goes, hurt people hurt people, you know, and that's one of the things that you were diligent about doing and without, again, saying too much. And, and you guys have to read this book. I can't say it enough. You know, you go all the way back to when you were three and four years old. So for those who remember our first visit, you talked about how you had to go and, and get counseling. And this was all based off of, well, in my opinion, I guess it was based off the lady giving you the assignment of going back into your childhood. And at first you thought it was about, and you said this in the book too, it was about, you know, uh, talking about your childhood and you were like, why in the world am I doing that? And then now it's led to a masterpiece, you know, in my opinion. So in doing that, how much did it take for you to remember everything that you went through or was it just at the top of your brain? Um, the first thing that I could remember that was detrimental to my life, it didn't take long at all to remember. Um, but once I thought about those moments, everything else unfolded. Mm. Like like a line of dominoes is just, just laid out. All the way back. And I had to those the, that pain everything I it just felt like it was fresh like it was front and center and, and it hurt right I spent many days and nights crying and and being angry mm -hmm. and I just went through all of those emotions again but I was able to actually process them um, <laughs> and as I explained in my book for some time I couldn't process what happened to me when right. I was four Right. I didn't know what it was. There are a lot of parents that, uh, and I'm that parent, you know, that, you know, a person is not supposed to touch you here. They're not supposed to, you know, if they make you feel uncomfortable, if they just, you need to say this. Or, or if you're in a situation uh, where you're afraid to say something in that moment, make sure when you get the opportunity to say something. I always made my children feel safe, mm -hmm. like like I'm a safe place to come and confide in. Right. Um and I don't blame my mother. Um, I don't think my mother knew better. Um, I think if she was, if she at that time raised us and said, you know, a person's not supposed to touch you here, or a person is not supposed to do A, B, or C, I, I would have known to tell her what was going on. Right. The only thing I knew to do was cry. Right. And, and, and ask her not to go so we wouldn't go to, to the quote unquote babysitter's house. Mm -hmm. um, when, when it did hit me like a ton of bricks at, when I was in first grade, it, it took it, it, it was as a result, a result of learning what I always knew what was wrong, but I never knew it had a name. I never knew right. it had a title to it. Right. And, and I, I had heard of that title. I've heard of that name before. I never knew that that's what happened to me yeah. until I learned about that in school. And that's not where a child's supposed to learn where their innocence was taken from mm -hmm. in school. Mm -hmm. you, you should learn that at home. Yeah, you, you should be taught certain things so certain things can be prevented. Though there are things that cannot be prevented. Yeah, you yeah. Know, but being being forced to do that assignment and going through those emotions, I was able to process it differently. Yeah, and I was able to face it and and. And say, I, you know, I had no control. It wasn't my fault. Because for years, I blamed myself. Mm -hmm. I thought it was my fault. And in the same sense, because this individual made threats to me about my siblings, I thought that I was doing something courageous by saving my siblings. Right. Which, that wasn't the case. Right. Um, but I also, once, once I processed those emotions, I had to face something else, which... What will the world think? What mm -hmm. will everybody think? Mm -hmm. You know, people are going to say what they want to say. Uh, I didn't look at it as in, you're only four. Right. I looked at it as in, I will be looked at as a piece of crap. Yeah, yeah. So let me ask this question, um, and I'm trying to word it because, you know, I want to talk about it, but not talk about it because I want people to read the book so they can get it. But in the situation that you're talking about now with the gentleman um, 
I know he touched you, right? And in the end of the book, not to the magnitude that it happened in the end, but the physical act, was it the same in regards to the magnitude of what was done or was it just a touchy feely thing in the beginning with, with you uh, from the first gentleman? No, it, it, it wasn't, it didn't compare at all on any level. Okay. Um, with the last situation, though I know now that that wasn't my fault, for many years I blamed my, I, I really did blame myself for the last situation because I was blinded by hate. Right. I was bitter. I was so bitter. I, I, don't, I don't, all I wanted to do was to make people hurt the mm -hmm. way they made me hurt. Right. The people that I thought were supposed to love and love me unconditionally and protect me did not. Yeah. And so I just wanted to do anything to make them hurt. And because of that, I didn't see the trap that I was walking into. Right. And so even though it was not my fault what happened, I blamed myself for years because if I wouldn't have been so blinded, I could have saw I could have saw something. I could have saw straight. Right. And that probably wouldn't have happened. And because of that, I took I took the brunt of the re I took the responsibility for that. Right, right. And I said, you know, well, if I wouldn't have did A, B, or C, then that wouldn't have happened. Yeah. And I kind of look at it like, you know, it, it, it led you to, of course, where you are now, but that was like a crucifixion almost, you know, um, you know, putting you in a place where you had nowhere else to go and you couldn't do anything because that was like a rock bottom moment, you know, and in my opinion, I know there's many other journeys that you went through throughout this whole journey. But it was no way but to find your way back up, you know, and to discover yourself. And here we are with this book. So and we're in these moments of talking about some real touchy feely things. But there's plenty of laughter in the book. There's plenty of joy in the book, you know. And like you said, um, with your mom, the way she was, you know, y'all still had fun. The thing that and and excuse me, because I'm just talking about what I want to talk about. And if there's anything you want to cover in the book, which, you know, I'll give you the floor on that. But now I know why you like to watch movies so much. <laughs> you know, I, I catch you going to every single movie that comes out. And I'm like, this chick is wasting money. Let that come out on DVD. But talk about that. Talk about how it was to grow out. Like, couldn't even watch TV. Didn't have a DV, VCR, you know, at the time. No. Uh, growing up, um, during that particular period in my life, uh, the television was uh, considered to be the hell of vision, the yeah. gateway to hell. Um, so it's like um, the things that you would, their explanation was, okay, you on TV, they show sexual things, uh, they talk of profanity, anything that's considered a sin, you know, it, and, and if you're not known to, or let's say that you're watching something and that's not really a part of your character and you see something that you're not used to seeing, it piques your interest. The influence. So yeah. your in once your interest is, is piqued, then you you know, you're curious and right. there's a possibility you may act upon this curiosity right. and, and so to refrain from did, all of in which the I end. did in the end. Yes I did. <laughs> I sure did. <laughs> to the third power. Yeah. So um I understood their their at some point I understood their reasoning behind it, but it was extreme. Right. Um, and so there. There's no their gray reason, area. It, no no it's leniency. Black and white. Black and white. And that's what I wanted to. Was it really that serious? Like black or white? Black Just, or white. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's and, that's crazy. And and you know you got a hold of the TV at the friend's house, <laughs> and you know you start watching TV, and that that was that was. It, Oh I mean, my goodness, that was like the holy grail. I'm right? like, that's all I wanted to do. That's the first thing I did. Yeah, yeah. Forget that I was skipping school. Exactly. I was here. I'm you watching it's TV. TV. It's a movie on. Martin is on. <laughs> I mean, you people, I, I say you people, I apologize. The audience, you, you got to get the book to understand what we're talking about. You have to read the book to understand what we're talking about. And the way she wrote it and the details that you gave, again, was so vivid. I, I mean, I just couldn't stop reading, you know? I mean, and as you know, I talked to you. From the moment I opened the book, when I texted you that first time, I was right here. When I said I'm on the acknowledgement page, I hadn't even made it through the, the first page of the acknowledgements, and I was already just overwhelmed with just knowing everything you've been through that I know, you know, and then just waiting to get to it. Um, so my other thing is moving to the church and all these confessions y'all made in front of the church. What, like, 
Is there a lot of people? Is there <laughs> five or ten people? No, I mean, I'm a, just a few hundred. What? Yeah, I would. If that was the large. You just one. stand up. Yeah, I did, and it just. <laughs> no, that, I mean, it was just no, like that. No, it's um, typically you know there were certain people that you know we had uh, a period of prayer prayer requests, mm -hmm. and that were people that would raise their hand and and ask to you know for the church to pray for themselves or pray for their other people but then there were times where you you know some people most people you know you wanted to confess and, and you know and so you would say I, you know i need to confess you go up into stand in front of the church and you turn around and you confess wow. you confess in to to every detail um and to in front of everyone and and you ask for their forgiveness you've already asked for the lord to forgive you but you ask for their forgiveness for me personally, because I've always been that kid that if something didn't make sense, I'm you don't like, ask the question. I'm like, so to me, I'm like, you like my son, <laughs> daddy. What? What? He asked me this morning. Side note, he's like, why was it cold yesterday, but it's hot today? I don't know, boy. No, like, but no, it's just you know, you but you have the freedom good. of exactly, you know, the freedom of expression, you know. Huh. Yeah, but yeah, I'm sorry. Go no, ahead. No, that's okay. <laughs> for me, I always looked at that as gossip i'm like oh, why do i have to okay it's bad enough that i sinned right okay the lord already i asked him to forgive me he, he's already forgiven me why do i have to stand in front of all these people and mm -hmm. tell them put them in my business yeah just so they could turn around and talk about me because yeah. that's all they're gonna do right the majority of them and and use it as table talk of course at that age i didn't call it table talk but mm -hmm. i always thought it was gossip mm -hmm. and giving a person a reason to put them in your business it did not make sense it never made sense it still doesn't to this day right and, okay you know, it's just that kind of raises another question i don't know if this is something you want to answer or not because of the book and what's to come but your opinion of that church because there was this transition to me of going through it and your mom doing the things that she was doing and the people doing what they were doing and you obeying and going along with things at a certain time and then at another time your your own opinion setting in and then the book ending the way it ended and now here you are today and everything else that you've been through do you do you still feel that that environment was like toxic was it still good bad what do you feel in regards to that sector of you know coming up as as with anything there's good and there there is a good side and a bad side mm -hmm. i am appreciative of that church okay because even though maybe let me back up if i would have been born in that church i probably wouldn't have felt the way that i felt mm -hmm. but to be to be to join this church at the age of six and remembering the freedom that i had right. prior to that was a hard transition for me. And on that note, did your mom, like, she made a hard, cold turkey turn like that with, it, the, with the church? She struggled for, in my opinion, for a very brief time. And okay. she quickly got in line. Got in line. Oh, yes, yes. She was, uh, had her uh, whole armor of plate on for the Lord right. from head to toe. Right. And not one piece of, <laughs> of, of skin was sticking out and yeah. whatever... They said she jumped, did, skipped, hopped, whatever. <laughs> that's that's how she was. She's very faithful. She's right. she's 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 loyal to a fault. Right. But you know, I don't know what she was battling with prior to. Mm -hmm. She she was she did what she thought what was best for us, and so, but yet and still, that church taught me a lot, and 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 it's, it instilled a lot of good wholesome things in me. Right. But. What I have to realize is God wasn't standing in, a, in that pulpit. Right. So that means that nobody was perfect in that church. Absolutely. So regardless of how hard a, a, an entity or, or, or a group of people were trying to do right, there were bound to be mistakes. Mm -hmm. And everybody wasn't horrible. It was, we had a lot of good times, and, and I express it in the book. However, yeah. the, for those people that had... And it was few for those few people that had their ulterior motives, and you, it, it, it eventually showed. It, it, it eventually peeked this ugly head out. For some, it took longer than others, and those are the people that made it. Made me not like it. Right. Gotcha. Made, made me feel some type of way. Gotcha. But as but as far as teaching me about the gospel, 
uh, teaching me how to cook, teaching me how to sew, teaching me how to grow things, teaching me about life as, you know, in, in, in regards to a spiritual aspect, that's something that I, I feel like I have a leg up on many people. Right, right. And I'm appreciative of that. That's what's up. You know, and, and, and being able to spit out that word and, and, and knowing that it's deeply rooted because God's word is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore, mm -hmm. you know, and to have that and then have the experience that you were going through, I think it meant more to have that word, you know, with you. So that was a good thing. Um, so before I ask any more questions, what, what type of um, journey do you would you say people would go on as they're reading the book as they're reading because i know what i can say you know so i'm only asking because i read the whole book and now i know because to me i went on a journey so what type of journey do you say or if you want to talk about things because i don't know how you want to you know if you want to speak too much about it but we got to give them something to make them want to read it what type of journey do you think they they would experience with this book i think i think it would be an adventure um during that adventure i think they'll be like she crazy yeah <laughs> Because I said, I was like, this she chick crazy. here is something else. <laughs> she crazy. And yeah. you just never know what may come out of her mouth. She she, she speaks before she thinks. Right. And, and she, she's known for putting her foot in her mouth. And, and, and you think you may say something slick, but she's going to come back slicker. Yeah. You know, but in this book, you're going to laugh. You may, you're going to get angry about some things. And, and depending on, you know, how you are emotionally, you may cry. Yeah, right. Right, definitely. Um, I hope they can see that. Um, so, the thing that got me that I wasn't really clear on was, I know y'all wore the skirts and stuff, and then you started wearing your brother's pants and mm -hmm. things. Were there was there you and your sister and whoever else was in the church, and was there another? group because there was at one point where they were like the cult girls or whatever that was was it two different no that was the secular world okay the people from the outside that didn't understand why we wore the long dresses why we did certain things so a lot of times when when you are an outsider to a church mm -hmm. a, a, a company into anything and you don't understand why they do certain things you begin to assume and so that was the assumption that the secular world made because of the long dresses and 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 we really didn't we didn't not really but we didn't interact with the secular world at all unless you know for those that couldn't afford to homeschool their children we went to school with them or if you worked with them you went to the grocery store and you were around them outside of that the only way, only time we were dealing with, uh, we would uh, interact with them is if we were witnessing to them. Gotcha. Some people call that recruiting, but it was called witnessing to them. You're sharing the gospel with them. Uh, because at the end of the day, if you know the truth and you have the opportunity to, whether it's five to ten minutes, and to meet someone that does not, uh, that, that may, may potentially not know that true and truth, and you walk away, their blood is on your hands. Right. It is your job to share the word, regardless if they agree with it or not. It mm -hmm. is your job. You've done your job. That that's what you're supposed to do, as you know, someone that's supposed to be Christ-like. Right. And um, but in regards to the cult, that's that mentality that came from the outside looking in. Gotcha. So we would. We, there were many terms. We were called the skirt crew. We were called, you know, uh, those cult girls. Or, mm -hmm. That was. That, how can I put this? A lot of things changed gradually after I left. Right. A lot of parents um, <laughs> listening to um, stories, and, you know, because I'm, I'm in contact with a lot of people that I grew up with. Some are still there. Some are not there. Um, the ones that are still there, I'm not really in contact with at they're all. They're in the church or they're in that city? They're back home. Okay. And right. um, But I, there is a couple people that... Um, I'm not going to say that. Okay. No, yes, I'm going to say that. There are a couple of people that uh, have one foot in the church and one foot outside the church. So, you know, they may... That's uh, everywhere. They, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, as my mom would put it, you can't serve two masters. You right. can't have... You can't serve the devil and serve God at the yeah. same time. But She in the, got on you on that part of yeah, it, too. Yeah, she, she did. Yeah, you know, I she like said that. I straddled the fence a lot. Right. You know, which I intentionally did right, at some right, point. Right. But... There are some people, and, and I, I feel like it's hypocritical, but then again, I'm not perfect. Right. There's a lot of hypocritical things that I do. But in, in, in regards to God, 
at the stage that I'm at in my life, I don't play with him. Mm -hmm. I, I know he could take, he could snuff my life just like that and yeah. take anything that I love from me just like that. Yeah. But for those individuals that, you know, on social media, living one life, and then in a church, they are living a whole nother life. I'm, I'm afraid for it's them. You don't, yeah. you don't do that. Yeah. You don't play around like that. But for the individuals that are no longer there, but we're in constant contact with via social media, or they may come in town from time to time, you know, they understand, they get it. Um, but for the younger generation, when things begin to relax and they were allowed to uh, participate in sports in school, they were allowed to uh, um, start, I mean, from wear pants. I mm -hmm. mean, when I was there, it was a sin to wear pants. Right. I mean, it, the sin to do anything, <laughs> blink your eyes. And, and um, the sports thing, oh. how did that... How, how was that sinful, I guess? Or what was the idea behind playing sports? You know, you didn't get to do anything that a normal child could do. And that's something that I want the audience to understand is that that would be a tough, you know, upbringing for me. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, my mom is right here. She was very strict and she was all about God and different things like that. But we were able to participate and, you know, the, the, the um, playing sports and all that. So, what was explained to you guys in regards to that as to why you couldn't watch TV, couldn't play sports, couldn't just do anything? Well, in regards to the sports, for the way my mom would explain it, it's, it came down to dressing out. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, most of the sports you had to wear shorts or pants. Gotcha. At, at that time, I don't remember a sport that you could wear a skirt, mm -hmm. a, 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 Long a modest skirt, skirt <laughs> with a lot of pleats in it that didn't show your silhouette. Yeah, you could be a cheerleader, but that's yeah, that's Jezebelish. Too much. Yeah, yeah, you're showing too much skin. Yeah. So, um, but a lot of that changed. A lot of the younger generation was able to partake in sports and hang out with the secular world and do a lot of the things that I feel like if they would have been that relaxed when we when the older generation was there, most of us wouldn't have left. Mm. But but it, 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 we got beat. The older generation got beat down and chastised for almost anything. Yeah. The younger generation, they don't get it, and they and they won't get it to this day. Right. They think that you know we were they, they were only going by what they would hear their parents say or other people say in the church. You know we were, you know, li just wanted to go out and live in sin. No, that wasn't the yeah. case. Yeah. Yeah. We couldn't take it anymore. Wow. So, in the book, you just said you know y'all get beat down, and since you wrote it. I'm talking about it. You said you would get beat. Now, is that just a form of expression, or no. y'all would get beat? No, I, I I would get the beat. The black was beat off of. Wow. You know, I probably used to be. I, I did used to be darker than this, but they, <laughs> that has nothing to do with the beating. But um. you went back to staying in housing. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously though. No. But like for our our, our household, I can't speak for anyone else's. Right. Um, you had the rod of correction, which was a board. Mm -hmm. On one side, it had all of our names. On the other side, it had scriptures. Children, obey your parents. For in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother. I can go on and on. Mm -hmm. and then we had the hose pipe. You cut a hose pipe. It's about this long. It's, it curves. And then you had this leather belt, this thick leather belt that had holes in it. All of our beatings consisted of getting beat naked. Mm -hmm. and so there's, there wasn't just coming here, I'm going to beat you. No, you, you basically, you're reading the scripture. You're um, acknowledging the sin that you did. You are getting on your knees, asking the Lord to forgive you. And then you lay across that bed and you get beat until whomever is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because um, you said that in one, yeah. of the, one of the moments that you had blacked out. And so my thing is that, so so going back to the book, you know, you, you went back to as far as I think three or four years old and you took us on your journey all the way up until the moment that you left. Um, and is it is Pascagoula? Pascagoula. Yeah. I went to Pascagoula High School, the old Pascagoula High. I don't know nothing about, the nothing about the new Pascagoula High. The <laughs> old Pascagoula High School. Right. Pascagoula Panthers. A lot of um, a lot of athletes came up out yeah, there. Yeah. Moss Point, yes, all that. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So I'm, I'm aware of that area, and I just want to make sure I pronounce it right. So from from the moment of being three up until the time that you left, you were how old? Was it 16? Or? I was right before I turned 16. Right before you turned 16. So this is what y'all can look forward to is the upbringing of this young lady and the reason why she thinks the way she thinks now, the experiences you've, you've been through. And there's a journey that you not only go on your journey, but you do a, a really great job of telling your sister, 
your your brother and your mom and you and then the church life all at the same time and i was just like this is amazing you know and the other thing that you did was that you didn't call anybody out you know you didn't use names you didn't you know identify anybody in particular which we kind of talked about that you know before you wrote the book so i wanted to applaud you on that but um and of course, your, your your mom, your brother, and your sister, of course, you know, for those who know you will know who those individuals are. But you even did a great job on minimizing, you know, what you said about them, you know, which was which was a really great job uh, within itself. But the the process of growing up is what you honed into and what you were thinking, why you were experiencing what you were experiencing. And for me... For kids that are growing up now, I think they should read this book because it's it's important for them to understand that no matter, take out the church, take out how you grew up, but process everything that you go through in life, get an understanding of the different people that you deal with. And it, it reminds me of what I'm doing with my kids in the chess club. You know, you, you, you set up people in your life or you establish relationships in your life and you figure out what they're good for, you know, because I saw you doing that in the book as well, you know, ah, nah, this dude ain't good for my mama, you know, oh, this situation ain't good, and you were able to identify what these different individuals were doing or meaning to you, and so in the process of doing that, you were able to tell the whole story and, and give us a good overview of, you know, the, the experiences that you had. So, um, what what had you well i guess i know but what made you turn in the end in regards to how you felt about the church and 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 just your experiences and what gave you the strength to do what you did you that, know that um to be totally honest that was years later okay i i that hatred was in me for for many years it took for my children, for me to start seeing one of my sons suffer, mm. and I couldn't understand for the life of me why right. he was going through what he was going through. He's always, prior to that that time, um, had been a good kid, yes ma'am, no ma'am, um, but I didn't realize that what I had worked so hard at bearing and forgetting was still affecting my present. Right. And it was, and and which is why I was continuously making mistakes. I made it, it, with my second book. I'm because this is it, just this, a, this is nothing compared, this is to, nothing what my compared to what's to come. No, this is a reflection book. Yes, I would say yes. you know, and it takes you again from three or four years old up to sixteen, and then now at the end there's this huge to be continued. Yeah. <laughs> Not literally, but you know, yeah. for me, and I'm sure that you agree that there's this big huge to be continued type of deal um and it was important to tell that story so yeah so I, I to answer your question i try to tell it in a way of i want i, I try to use my intro work to let people know that i learned right to kind of put things in there and say yes i know at this point in my life when i made this decision i knew for a fact that regardless of how calculating because i got very calculating mm -hmm. at, at mm -hmm. a certain point sure and I, I knew exactly what i was doing how i was doing it and how i wanted it to do not realize that i was setting myself up but i wanted them to know that's the key that i i get it now it was wrong but this is where i was at that time which is another reason why outside of being not wanting to be sued another reason why i didn't use names is because i understand that regardless of of an individual everybody was at a different place at that time in their life right. whether they are no longer here whether it was life experiences and they finally got it and they and they ask for you know forgiveness and they're no longer that person I, everybody is a different person hopefully right at, at now in their life so everybody deserves an opportunity everybody deserves a second chance but yet and still if you affected my life in some way whether it was positive or negative in in in, in some magnitude you're in this book we're gonna talk about it yeah we're gonna discuss it <laughs> that's just what it, it was we're gonna talk about it. it and 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 that's that's you know hats off to you to be able to have that domino effect hit you and to be able to recall all these events which my mom's sitting right here she's like how was she able to remember all this stuff i'm like i don't know it just it, it just came out and you know she'll get it when she gets to read this book um but so 
trying to cover some things that I remember, but is there, is there anything, any particular point of the book, I don't know how many times you've read it or just skimmed through it, is there any point of the book that you want to talk about, you know, on the show? Because I know last time you were here, we were kind of all over the place and, you know, we didn't really get to talk about everything we want to talk about. If there's any particular point of the book that you want to highlight, you know, that kind of sticks out to you. I do. Um, I guess I was so wrong. I was, it, you know, there's a part of me that hope my mom doesn't read this book, but I know she will. <laughs> I was so wrong during this particular period because I, it was during my, this is after the worst beating I had ever had in my life, you know, beating that I was beat so bad in the shower that my, my left eye closed. Yeah. You know, and yeah. just like. That's when you got hit with the belt, right? No, hose pipe. Hose pipe, okay. I was beat. To, to, I was beat. Yeah. I, and and you have to read it, and it changed me. It it, it, it I didn't care anymore. Uh, yeah, that's when. Yeah, I got you. I didn't care anymore at that point. It was like, screw it. Yeah. So I'm I'm gonna do whatever I can to hurt you. Mm -hmm. And and there was this one thing that I did that's to a do it close that, to the end there. Yeah. that that you know when I we were talking about people standing in front of the church and confessing, I was trying to string my the roof over my head long string stringing along long enough so I, me and my out. sister can come up with a plan so i can get out that i actually made the church feel like i brought the lord in it and mm. i stood up in front of the church and gave a fake confession mm. um, but i knew behind closed doors i didn't ask god to forgive me for nothing because i wasn't feeling sorry for anything right. that i did but i knew let me put on a show long enough to convince these people and convince right. my mama because i knew my mama was about this point this much away from putting me out. Right. I'm like, I gotta do whatever it takes. And I really feel bad, even to this day, knowing that I got that calculated. Mm -hmm. to, 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 to fool a church full of people and to fool my mother, which is the most important person. Right. And while God is sitting back watching me, looking like a fool and acting like a yeah. fool. Because yeah. he knew I never had a conversation with him. He knew I was smart enough not to come to him. Because right. he knows my heart. You can ask God to forgive you for something. But he knows if you're really sincere yeah. in here. Yeah. So I, wasn't gonna, I, I always knew not to play around with the Lord. Right. So I still feel bad to this day about how calculating I got. Yeah. I, that was... That was it wasn't. I thought it was genius back then, but it wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> you, you put a whole plan together. I, I mean, man, she put a plan together, okay? But, so... That was like the enemy working inside of you and you thinking that you were smarter than, yeah. you know, you needed to be or, you know, thought you were or whatever. And what happened in the end um, was devastating, you know. And um, like I said earlier, it's, I know that set you up. So God has a way of getting our attention, mm -hmm. you know. And but it's like I totally understand, you know, why you didn't why your attention was not grabbed sooner. And then I know for what's to come because of us talking, you went through more things after this book. Um, but that was out of anger and, and hate. And, you know, like you said, going through the process of healing and dealing with your, your whole past and just being frustrated or whatever. But um, I guess in, in reading the book and, 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 you know, knowing everything that I know and knowing that there's more to come, the part that I would like for people to understand is that it's very important that you talk to your kids. You know what I'm saying? You talk to them, let them express themselves, walk them through the process of what they're feeling and what they're going through. Because as parents, we don't, we don't know, like each generation is different. You know what I'm saying? Every generation is different. So the things that they're dealing with at school and the things that they're going through at school is not what we went through. Maybe similar, but it's on a different platform, you know, and, and at a different level and, you know, a different magnitude. And so do you think that was part of the church or just how you were raised in the situation you were in? Did you feel like, you know, you didn't have that person to talk to or to express yourself or what, what would you say in regards to that? And I want to make sure I'm understanding. Are we, are, we, are we referencing me or referencing when I started going through what I went through with my as son? You, as you would know, no, for yourself for when you son. were growing up. I didn't have, I didn't have um, that person that I could talk to because anyone that you talk to and you, and you and that made you feel comfortable enough to come and confide in them 
all they did was turn around and told somebody else. Yeah. And that somebody else was either your, you know, was of course your mom. Um, there was many days you came home to yeah. cars in the driveway. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, God, we'll go again. go again. Yeah. And, and, and it's just, there was, everybody was in your business. That's right. just what it was. Now, I can't say that. I mean, I'm pretty sure there were some households that, um, you know, some kids may have been able to confide in their parents about certain things and, and their parents were smart enough not to bring it to the church. Right. I'm, I'm 100% sure that there were some families like that and those right. were the families that began to relax on a lot of the rules and, and I big up those families. More power to them. I wish my mom had the, the confidence to do that but right. she was a single mother in the right. church. Yeah, and and I'm sure she, you know, to paint the picture because we we've mentioned your mom a lot, and I know you you've mentioned how ultimately she wanted what was best for you guys, you know, um, but it was just a matter of her dealings and her capacity to understand what needed to be done, and then that placed y'all in a situation where y'all you you went through what you went through, which is why um, your book is so important, um, and the navigation of your day to day life and and what you allow your kids to deal with on their own and the people that you get involved with them and mentorship and, you know, make sure you do the background checks and make sure that you, you, you understand who you're allowing to deal with your kids because whether you're, you have a perfect marriage or you're a single parent or whatever the case may be, we can't raise our kids by ourselves. You know what I'm saying? That's something that I, I kind of got from the book as well too, is that it, it takes a village, you know, but your village was a hindrance, you know, to you guys uh, to a certain extent, but they also gave you a lot of things and a lot of the strength that you have now today, you know. Um, so um, the other part of the book that was interesting to me was how you and your sister's relationship grew so strong and how you guys worked together to deal with what you guys were dealing with, you know, and then you talked about something that happened with her and, you know, we didn't get into that in the book, but there's multiple layers through your journey from your brother and your sister to yours. And how do you guys deal with that today? What do they think about the book? What do, what do they say? Um, I want to start with, cause my brother lives in Mississippi. Okay. Uh, my brother is very, he's a manly man. And he's very, he, he internalizes a lot. Mm. And so he doesn't really vocalize how he felt or, you know, about that time period. He may say a few things here and here and there, but he does, he kind of stays to himself. So I have to focus on my sister. This book was supposed to have been a joint thing that my sister and I mm. was going to work on. And if it would have yeah, followed through... If it would have followed through, it would, this book would have probably been three or four times this size. Right, right. Um, that's the things that I touched on. It was not my story to tell. Uh, my sister has always been, you know, you have those children that are people pleasers. Mm -hmm. And everybody just likes, she just lights up a room to this day. You yeah. know, it doesn't matter where she goes, she'll light up a room. Yeah. And and that's always been her personality and and. and she, she attracts people. Mm -hmm. And so she always sees the good in everybody. And, and it doesn't matter where we go. If we go to the zoo, by the time we leave, two in a month, these are her friends. <laughs> that, that's just everybody. Two animals are going to be her buddies. <laughs> that's her buddies. And she's th them her new friends. That's, yeah. that's, how she, that's how she's always been. So it's one thing for me as a child who was always getting in trouble for her mouth or mm -hmm. didn't know her place or, you know, her attitude. But my sister, she wasn't known for that. And I used to kind of be jealous. And, right. and, and I can I can admit said that. You wanted to be who she was yeah, or whatever. Yeah. I, I did, because I'm like, I wish I could I wish I had that. And 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 the only thing that I could chalk it up to is my sister must have took after my dad's side of the family. Mm -hmm. Because my dad's side of the family, they're awesome. Even yeah. though I didn't grow up with them, but that was because of my mother. I didn't, I didn't get to know them until I turned 16, but they are awesome. They're successful. They're family-oriented. Outside of my dad, he, I think he was the only screw-up. But um, everybody else, were, they're awesome. Right. And and they're always doing things together, and, and, and they have that same personality that my sister has. So right. I know she gets that from them, but as a child, not knowing them, I couldn't figure out 
where did she get that from? Yeah. She didn't get that from my mom's side of the family. Yeah. Not to say not to say that my mom's side of the family are horrible people. They're not. They're just everybody's different. Right. Um so to watch my sister reach a point in her life where people that she's always looked up to and that that she considered the world turn their back on her mm-hmm. based because of lies and and these people it it broke it hurt me more than it was like it hurt me more than when I would get in trouble yeah. I was used to it but my sister wasn't used to it it was like to me I looked at her as as a and this may be extreme as a sacrificial lamb because right. it's like watching her being hurt by and tore down little by little by these lies and she didn't know where these lies were coming from I knew where they were coming from because yeah. I didn't trust nobody yeah. but I didn't, and but she didn't want to she didn't want to see it and then they progressively gotten worse and then to find it's one thing to to watch somebody who never has done anything wrong to somebody hurt get hurt by people that she loved but it's another thing for her to finally realize that these people just do not care about yeah. me like yeah. I thought they did that broke my heart mm. and I'm like and and I, if I if I if I could have fought all her battles, I would have. And I'm yeah. the baby sister. Yeah, and that's what I was going to say. You're the baby sister. I'm yeah. the baby sister. Yeah. But it's the brother, your su- I mean, your sister, and then yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and my sister, not, when she became an adult, she she's still that person where she attracts. She has this light about her. But she is... She's different. Right. She's very. She. It's hard to explain in in one one setting. But Steph, you need to write your book. <laughs> she do. You think my her book was shut? Her yeah. story was shut. My story all yeah. the way down. But it's y'all's story. Is is what I got out of this. I mean, because y'all y'all did that together. You know. Um. I know there's more to come. I can't wait to read that. But, you know, in this book, like I said again, I'm just trying to give. A overview, you know, to entice people to want to read it because I mean, it will change you in in a lot of ways. You know, from four to sixteen, you know, the journey you told from middle school. I mean, from elementary to middle school, and then going into your high school time. Um, the thing, the overall, you know, in light of time, the overall view. I mean, the overall thing that I got from the book was, it's very, very, very important to stand on your own ten toes and know who you are. That's what I got when I got through reading the book. You know, what message, in short, would you say you would want people to have about themselves reading your story? Because like you say on the front of the book, we all have a story to tell. What what message would you want to display to the people? Um, I really, this is for teenagers. This is for the, the, the young people. Right. And, and, it, and it's kind of hard because, you know, when we're young, we think we know everything. But when, when our parents are, are dealing with us, um, you know, try to look at it, things through their eyes. You don't know what they're dealing with, mm-hmm. you know. And, uh, being a parent, uh, raising kids doesn't come with a rule book. And, and try not to, even if you have a parent that, that may be extreme and won't let you do this and you're looking at your friends and they have all this freedom, just try to just not be so quick to act on things. and. Right. and Try to look at things from all aspects, and I know that's kind of hard to tell a teenager to do right, that. Right, right. It it because that takes experience in life. Yeah. But it will it will prevent a lot of heartache and pain. Yeah. It will prevent some of it because at the end of the day, regardless, when you reach a certain point, yes, you're still a child to your 18. Mm-hmm. You know, what happened to me when I was 15 could have been prevented. Right. If I would have just known better, if I wasn't blinded by hate. Yeah. And I'm going to just say it like this because there's a message, I guess, in the way I view your mom, right? So we're talking about your mom, and hopefully nobody feels like she's this demon and and crazy because she's not. At all. She's very, very, very loving. Mm -hmm. And in my view, I think she just stood fast to what God gave her, Mm -hmm. stood in her beliefs. Mm -hmm. And did the process day to day of what she knew to do. Mm -hmm. And then also what she was taught. However, in doing that, she allowed the other people to step in as well. You know, so another reference to you got to know who you are, stand on your own 10 toes and be able to handle your own situations. But have an understanding again of what that puts y'all in. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want anybody to get, and your mom especially, I don't want her to think that, I don't know if she has a book or y'all talk or whatever, that 
you know, you're trying to paint her as a bad person because after reading the book, if you have any sense, you'll know that she was only doing the best she could because you kept saying, it, you know, over and over and over again. Um, but it was a journey, man. It, 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 it's it's a real journey. It's an amazing read, and um, I'm just I'm just kind of like at a loss for words, you know, after reading it. I mean, you did a great job, uh, like I told you before. But the the overall view of the book helps us to really grasp who you are, you know, get a great understanding of the upbringing you had because that's important, which I think you had mentioned it or if it was in one of our conversations of knowing a person's past and why they are the way they are now as an adult versus, you know, um, not knowing, you know, so kind of kind of speak on that for me a little bit in regards to, you know, people knowing who you are now. Um, it's kind of hard to say, but even though I shared you guys my my childhood, I, op I basically opened a window into my childhood, and I, I cut it off with me coming to Houston. Right. There are still a lot of lessons and journeys and valleys and tri trials and tribulations that I go through right. because I didn't realize the hatred was still in me, mm -hmm. and so I feel like by sh by sh breaking my my testimony up and sharing it piece by piece of course the second piece will be the big chunk right um and a lot more embarrassing to myself but it's it's a it's a necessity mm -hmm. because i prefer someone to look at look through the window of my eyes but from the past and know that they could be at that edge of possibly doing something i already did and say you know what let me step back right let me not do that that way let me do this a different way and it could either save your life uh, literally, mentally, emotionally, in, in, in many different aspects. There's many different ways of dying. Right. You know, and, and people die inside daily because they don't know how to get it out. Right. They're embarrassed to get it out. They're embarrassed to share it. They, it's because people, they're used to people putting on and as if their life is great. So for me, I just felt like this may not be much and, and it's not a big book, but I feel like it's it's a big punch mm -hmm. in, a, in a short amount of time mm -hmm. that I shared. And it, a good it, gut check. Yeah. yeah, and if you can read the book without looking at, focusing on some any gramma grammatical errors yeah. you may see, because yeah. you're going to see them. <laughs> uh, if you could look, read the book without doing that and actually see what my heart is trying to share, then you'll understand right. everything. Right. Man. Well, you know, shout out to you again. I appreciate, you know, you being here. Um, the book is amazing. Can't say that enough. Y'all need to go. How can they get it? Tell them how they can, you know, purchase their own books. Um, you can purchase it on Amazon.com. You can also purchase it through my website. I would prefer you not to purchase it through my website <laughs> because I've had some growing pains right. for the ones that pre-ordered my book. Um, they are, one of them should be receiving their books today um, and the rest should be receiving them this weekend. And I don't think it's fair to them that pre-ordered my book through my website and for other people to have already received their books by going straight through Amazon. So stick with Amazon um, and you can either do ebook or paperback. Absolutely, absolutely. So, Miss Alicia Evans, the New York's bestseller person coming soon. Great. Right. <laughs> yes, Lost in the Safe World. I mean, it's an amazing book. I read it in half a day, you know, just couldn't stop reading. And um, it's so many, you know, ups, downs, joy, happiness, um, sadness, of course. Um, but it's, it's definitely a great read. It's something that you should let. For any parent, th this, is a, this is a tool. You know what I'm saying? For kids who are having a rough time, who are disobedient, who are going through what they're going through and don't want to listen to parents, you have to read it and get not only your story, but to get another example of what could happen to you. You know, whether it happens or not, it happened in this book. You know, and so you're no different from anybody else on the face of earth. You know, you, you tried to listen. You did listen. You were smarter than the other people. You, you know, you did what you did. And in the end, when you thought you were on your way out, something happened, you know, and, and, and God snatched you a little bit. And so this is definitely something that I encourage every single parent, whether your kid is three, four, five on up so they can read, you know, themselves, um, definitely get this book. Let them read it because 
if they have any desire in their heart to do better after reading this book, they definitely will. You know, because it's going to be a shock value that, you know, you can't put a, a, a money sign on. Um, and so I just speak that to you that you should definitely push this amongst the young girls, definitely amongst the, amongst the young men. Because there's so many different ways to look at it. You know, the young men that are being the persons that they were to you, hopefully they can stop. You know, the young women that are the women, the, the young lady that you were, hopefully they can change and, and you know, not do the things that they were doing. Um, and so I'm going to... Um, purchase some for my chess club members and we're gonna you know actually read that book and have their parents read it and stuff like that like i was telling you before and um we'll talk about uh, a book sign that i want to you know help you know you with in this journey but i just once we met and you know you told me about what you were doing it was just you know placed on me to you know support you in this process and now that it's here you know we'll do whatever we need to do you know to get it out there even more um but so we appreciate y'all. Um, another uh, episode of the Reach Podcast Show with Miss Alicia Evans. You know, telling her story and talking about this book. Um, do you have any uh, idea of when you'll be done with the next one, or you hadn't gotten that far yet? You still basking in your glory here, or what? No. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? L Lord's willing, um, I'll be done with the book before the end of this year. That's okay. my goal. Okay. Um, I want to say this. My long, my my long term memory is a heck of a lot better than my short term memory. Man, so it's it's, so it's nothing for amazing. me to, to spit something out from a while ago versus to something that we may have just discussed right. an hour. I'm like, what did you say? Yeah, yeah. But I do want to say this. It is important as a parent to not provoke your children. Right. Because sometimes as parents, you could do certain things and you could poke and you could you. You can cause your child to, to, and I think it's somewhere in the Bible where you, you, you don't, you're not as a parent, and, and I'm, I'm just totally all over the place with this, but I know it's a scripture in the Bible where it talks about a parent not provoking your child. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, and mm -hmm. you, we, they play a part in that. Don't, don't, don't use your power. Right. To, to to just use your power and be be re, be responsible with your power with your mm -hmm. children because you don't know what they're dealing with. Yeah. You don't know how close they are to taking their life. Yeah. You, you don't know what they're dealing with and yeah. and you poking because you because I'm because I'm your daddy because I said so. I'm your mom because I said so. Mm -hmm. Stay in a child's place. You don't know if that moment was the moment they were trying to tell you something or would have told you something if you would have just been quiet long enough or just sat there and just watched them. Yeah. But you walking around with your chest poked out like I'm the parent and because I said it, this is what goes. Well, yeah. you know what? And tomorrow you look up, your child gone. Child gone. Yeah. And I mean, you know, man, we're going we gonna to let it go. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going we gonna to come back. We appreciate y'all tuning in. Um, again, it's Miss Alicia Evans with the new book, Lost in a Saved World. Um, again, like I said, every parent, y'all should have y'all kids read this book, read it yourself, read it together, you know, make it family time, whatever the case, because it is definitely a testimony. And then another question my mom had, is this fictional or non-fictional? Oh, it's definitely non-fictional. Exactly. So there is no fiction in this book. This is a real story. This is this young lady's story. And it could be thousands of other people's stories, and it could definitely help to save somebody's life, change somebody's li uh, life. And, um, you know, we applaud you for that, young lady. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right. Well, y'all tune in next week. Again, the Reach Podcast Show. We appreciate y'all tuning in. Salute.